There you go, question six. I do have a note at the top. This question may require some extra paper. It depends on how uh, much work you want to put into this problem. Um, we did one like this in class with a traffic light. Uh, there's another example in your book. And this one here, they're going to use a bag of cement. Uh, it states that the bag of cement weighs 325 newtons, and it's an equilibrium. That's an important part to say it's an equilibrium from the three wires. This is suggested in the figure above. Okay, so nothing's moving. Everything's sitting still. Two of the wires make angles at 60 degrees and 40 degrees with the horizontal. Assuming the system's in equilibrium, find the tensions T1, T2, and T3. So these three uh, cords will have those three tensions. So we know tensions are forces. Um, so we'll go ahead and draw out our free body diagram. This one, um, we can actually break this up into two parts. First off, I want to just look at uh, the cement and the rope. And then the second part of it here, I'll look at the top. You can do it all in one, but you have to, um, it's a little bit more to consider. If I break it up, it's a little bit easier. Let's first look at the bottom here with that um, bag of cement. We know that has a downward force of Fg. Okay, the force of gravity points straight down on the bag, and it even tells us that it has the weight of 325 newtons. So that's the force of gravity, 325. T3 is the only rope that is attached to that. So T3 has to be pointing up for it to be in equilibrium. And then from here, if we're just looking at this, it's only the sum of the forces that are in the y direction, because there's no x. And if it's in equilibrium, it means that the forces have to be zero. Sum of everything must be zero. Which means we'll have T3 minus 325. Uh, if that's equal to zero, we just add the 325 to the other side, and we instantly know that T3 is equal to 325 newtons which is down here, which is the easy part, okay? So the first one is figuring that out. So there's one of our answers. The next one, to figure out T1 and T2, we have to look at the upper figure here. And on that one, I'm gonna have T1, T2, and T3. So T3 on this one points down because again, top of the wire, bottom of the wire, or rope, or whatever you wanna call it, has to be in equilibrium. We have an upward pull from here. We must have a downward pull from here in order to cancel out. So T3, we know that to be 325 newtons. Okay. And then we have this uh, T1 and T2. Okay. And these are at angles. So uh, forces at angles, just like any other vector, we need to break them up. So if we break them up, they'll have X and Y components, something like that. Um, and we'll need to add those into our equations, okay? So let's see, let's, um, I'll start down here with those. So if I look at my, some of the forces for this diagram, I'm gonna have some of the forces in the X, some of the forces in the Y, okay? And again, we're in equilibrium. Even these ropes aren't moving at all, so these are both zero. If I look at what is made up of the sum of the forces in the x, T3 points down, so I don't care about that. T1 will have an x component in the negative direction. T2 will have an x component in the positive direction. So I'll start with T2, okay? And remember here's their angles are inside, okay? So the x component of T2 would be the hypotenuse, this is adjacent, so it would be the cosine of the angle. So for the x component of there, I'm going to have t2 uh, cosine of theta 2. Theta 2 is 40 degrees. Okay, so I just want to make sure we know that that is the x component of t2. Okay, and then like I said, we'll have a component of t1 but it is traveling in the negative x direction so I'm going to put that in here next minus t1 that's also adjacent so it'll be a cosine of the angle and uh, t1 has an angle of 60 degrees theta 1 so t1 cos 60 and that takes care of the x's okay for the y's I have t3 pointing downward and both T1 and T2 have an upward uh, component. 
So I'll start with the upward components. Okay, so I'm going to have T1 sine of 60 plus T2 sine of 40. So every time there's a T2, that's we're using 40. So T2 is 40. T1 we're using 60. T1 here is 60. So they have to they have to do their own angles. Okay. So it's these two components are pointing upward from these two vectors. And then T3 is pointing down. So we end up with a minus and T3 is equal to 325. Okay. So I've got my T3 here. I plug that in. I only have T1 and T2, but T1 and T2 show up in both of these equations. So this is a system of equations. I have two unknowns and I have two equations. So what I have to do is solve for one of them, plug it into the other one. Okay, so I want to solve for the thing I don't care about. So in this case, uh, let's, let's solve for T1 first, since that's our first problem here. So let's get rid of T2. So I want to solve this for T2. To do that, I'm going to add T1 cosine 60 to the other side of the equation. So I'll get T1 cos 60 is equal to T2 cos 40. And then I will divide by cosine 40 to get T2 by itself. Okay, so a couple of math steps. You can show that out in your homework. But this will tell us that T2 is equal to T1 cosine 60 over cosine 40. Okay, that'll be our T2. Okay, so now if we take that T2 and we plug it in down here for our T2, it'll eliminate T2 out of that equation and just give us T1. So let's do that. I'm going to do one more math step. I'm going to add this 325 to the other side. So we'll start with 325 is equal to T1 sine of 60 plus now where our T2 is, I want to put this in. So I'm going to have T1 cosine of 60 over cosine of 40 times the sine of 40. You can do a couple of trig identities in here. You have sine over cosine gives you a tangent. You can do some other things in here. But uh, given the, the, the degrees that we have, um, we can actually just solve this out for numbers. It's, it's absolutely OK. Um, so I have a T1 in, in both of these. So what I'm going to do is factor out T1. So I'm going to have 325 is equal to T1. And we're going to have sine of 60 plus the cosine of 60 divided by the cosine of 40 times the sine of 40. Okay, so now this is just a number. Your calculator can figure that. That's just a number for you. And what we're going to do is take that number and we're going to divide it onto the other side to get T1. Okay, if you plug this number in, your calculator you get 1.2855 and it keeps on going on there um, if you want you can just leave it as that that's fine dividing this to the other side so we'll divide by 1.2855 okay because that's what this is we'll get t1 and if you do that out t1 comes to 252.8. So we're going to round that up to 253. If you do a little different rounding, you might get 252 or 251, and that's okay. It just means that the rounding went off a little bit. Uh, and as we see, that matches up with our answer there for T1. To get the last one, we have T3, we have T1. To get T2, uh, we can take T1 and just plug it right into T2 over here. So we would have T2 is equal to 253 times the cosine of 60 divided by the cosine of 40. So that's coming from here. Okay, back down in here to get T2. And if we take and we plug that into our calculators, this is again just another number. This is all numbers. We should get 165, 165 newtons for T2. Okay, and that's how we get T1, T2, and T3.